Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. Today, I'll be telling you two stories. A leading lawyer in the crypto space has stated that the SEC has lost the lawsuit against the cryptocurrency exchange Ripple because of a recent court decision. In addition, the crypto fundamental expert reveals how Judge Torres unwittingly given the XRP community a weapon against Bitcoin maxis. I found this one particularly interesting, and I'm convinced that you will too and then goes on to emphasize a little bit of a back and forth between a Bitcoin maximalist who just spouts all sorts sorts of gibberish and stuff that I have a hard time believing he truly believes between that man and attorney Bill Morgan, who just utterly crushes him. But before going further ado, to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any type, I am not offering financial advice. And you should not make any financial decisions based on anything I say, okay, I'm just a fan who likes to make YouTube videos about crypto-related stuff for pleasure and as a hobby. Okay, so the newest developments actually began yesterday. Yesterday, my time on YouTube was severely restricted. This is something I wanted to bring to your attention, though you may already be aware of it. However, the latest paper outlining the program has Judge Annalisa Torres' signature on it. It was also mentioned that the next noteworthy state will be Here We Go on February 12, 2020. The party seeking relief must finish all necessary discovery before moving on to further issues. Now, in all honesty, we have done really good thus far with this case. It's this way. It's amazing that certain Bitcoin maximalists still insist on spreading the myth that XRP isn't completely safe and the SEC will end up victorious in this case despite the fact that none of those outcomes is even remotely possible. The odds of us getting what we want are so astronomically high that I simply cannot conceive of anything happening in this world that could change our minds. Here we have a headline from a leading attorney in the crypto space, who claims that the SEC has lost the plot in light of the recent court order and the Ripple case, and they're discussing an opinion piece written by attorney Fred Rispoli. And so it was after the latest updates on the schedule for this became public knowledge that this occurred. And if we're being completely transparent, this leadership switch at Lehman is very surprising. Do you believe Ginza is going to be leading the SEC for much longer? Most likely not. Anyway, here's what lawyer Rispoli has to say about it. The discovery schedule pertaining to remedies has been established, hashtag SEC versus Ripple. If any side decides to appeal the decision to the Second Circuit, that decision will not be issued before the middle of 2026. Count down the seconds till the game is over in your mind. The hashtag XRP community has abandoned you. That's true, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, if you get to that point in time, we don't even know what administration is going to be in charge. Then, another member of the P community shared their thoughts on XRPL in the form of the following. And he has a view, which I don't think is shared by the majority of XRP users. To sum up, I will merely say that we must politely differ on this topic, so it's totally acceptable. I can still like and appreciate someone even if they disagree with me. The only kind of person who would think it was the best way to live was a Bitcoin maximalist with a tribal child mentality. The attorney who was named in the response stated, I think they won, which contradicted the initial assertion. The primary focus was on decreasing the rate of ripple. I agree with you that the outcome of the question of whether XRP was offered as a security or not is less important than the fact that the entire issue was kept secret from everyone for so long. And so, you know, look, I mean, there's the part where the concept where I couldn't possibly have any sort of overlap with this particular person is the idea that, like, the process is the punishment. You've probably heard similar claims before. Indeed, I'm pretty sure Brad Garlinhouse has made a statement to that effect before. If I understand it correctly, that is the actual penalty. But what about the deceleration of XRP? Developer activity has undoubtedly suffered, and XRP's current price movement indicates a far lesser value for the cryptocurrency than would otherwise be the case. It's reasonable to assume as much, and I get it, yet, what exactly do we mean when we say one, especially considering that the central question of this debate was, in all honesty, whether or not XRP itself is a security. That was the crux of the matter, 
and the SEC was defeated. So if you want to talk about the damage that was done and then the meaning, that's fine, but from a legal perspective, what was being considered was whether or not extrophy itself is a security, and it clearly is not. So I'm not going to dispute that there were certainly damages on I've been emphasizing that we've all been talking about that for years. What I'm trying to say is, despite the SEC's destructive influence, those little punk-ass bitches persist. The answer is yes. Well, I guess it all depends on what happens from here, the lawyer riskily replied. You are correct in attributing credit for slowing down Ripple to the SEC. Is the injury going to heal? Okay, well, we'll see, that may have dampened the wave effect, but only in the United States. Adoption of XRP as a bridge currency for instantaneous transactions increased dramatically. They were extremely successful in every arena. They made no attempt to avoid accidentally touching American soil. Wasn't it so, do you recall? I'm going to guess June of 2022. For what it's worth. There was a rise in OTL transactions, as reported by Ripple. Was it like 900% growth from the previous year? And this time it's after the lawsuit? June of 2022 seems about perfect to me. The number of underwriters has reportedly increased by almost 900% in the past year. The rest of the globe didn't give a damn, so they didn't bother slowing down Ripple there. They have caused damage in the USA. That is true in this case, yes. Also, Australian-based legal expert Bill Morgan explains how Judge Emily Zatoris, the judge overseeing the SEC vs. Ripple lawsuit, unintentionally gave the XRP community a weapon against Bitcoin maxis by analyzing the coin within the framework of how we Torians do things. The verdict that Judge Torres is expected to make in the Ripple case was a hot topic of conversation over the weekend. A Bitcoin maxi using the handle Scam Daddy tweeted recently that Judge Torres didn't make it clear what kind of asset XRP is. The judge ruled in July that XRP itself is not a security, despite the SEC's claims to the contrary. As a result, the judge's declaration that XRP is not a security is misleading because it does not clarify whether the asset is a commodity or currency. Okay, so I know who the scam daddy guy is, he's a real piece of work. I mean, like I said before, I don't require consensus to like or interact with someone. However, if I get the impression that they are not acting in good faith, I become disinterested. I recall debating X with this person back and forth a long time ago, when he was just, I don't know, maybe a year ago. After each of his demonstrably false claims, here's the fact it's something that cannot be if this part's a fact, I'd counter, and then you just excited, he'd keep talking. And that's when you realize that he's not being honest. I finally decided that it wasn't worth it to keep blocking the person. But I'm going to see him nonetheless, just so I can get rid of him as a human being. So that's what I did. I simply muted the guy's mic. I'm not interested because I didn't bring the necessary faith. Later, allegations surfaced from trusted community members that he was involved in even more dubious activities. I'd like to keep this from going too far off the tracks. But if you try to pass yourself off as someone else, it's clear that you have an identity crisis. So I finally said, you know what, I'm done. Unblocking, and he was no longer able to contact me but he still participates actively in our group. Because of this, his name continues coming up again and again in the media here. But he keeps insisting that you've witnessed these incredible improbabilities. The good news is that there are lawyers among us who can easily demolish his bogus arguments in court. Since I still haven't blocked, I'm relieved that I no longer have to. Still, I must say, I do understand. Like I'm looking at his stuff still, but I don't have to personally engage. That's it. I just want to avoid having any more contact with this human being. The screenshot is here, though. Mr. Huber of the XRP community mentioned this. A Bitcoin magazine that shall remain nameless claimed, there is no clarity as to what type of asset XRP is just what it is not, as seen in this screen capture. And attorney Bill Morgan chimed in to say, he is wrong after reading it and reposting it. 
In ruling on the summary judgment motions, it is quite evident that Judge Torres viewed it as a commodity. Although Attorney Morgan is right about the scheme, Daddy still believes he is right and wants it. There's this, I think, misplaced assurance about it. In response, he told Attorney Morgan that the polar opposite was true. When she determined that institutional sales of ripples constituted the sale of an unregistered security, she made that determination. So there you have it, according to her, parties did not view the XRP sale as a sale of a commodity. So he thinks he's got the sure thing? Oh, no, she's not going there at all. But that's a major distortion of what happened here. This is quite pleasing to me. Even though it's nice to see him in action, I don't believe he's doing Bitcoin business in Mexico in good faith. Here, then, is what Morgan, the attorney, had to say. This is a guy he really digs on, in fact. Your selection of an excerpt in which Judge Torres explains why our category of sale to institutional buyers should be considered investment contracts demonstrates a fundamental misunderstanding of the matter. The SEC established the several sales categories. However, the judge's perspective on XRP is not revealed in her analysis of the three types of transactions. She studied the token within the context of the decision in a section notable for its title, quote, a the XRP token in quote, which can be found on pages 14 and 15. The subject, the object being offered, is not always a security that's quote, not necessarily a security, as the judge stated in the very first paragraph of her analysis of the XRP coin. She then lists various types of assets, both tangible and intangible, and explains that in each case, the subject of the investment contract was a standalone commodity, which was not itself inherently an investment contract into quote. Did you hear that folks, standalone commodity, as attorney Morgan put it. Finally, on pages 14 and 15, she concludes that the section on XRP was unnecessary because, as a digital token, XRP is not an investment contract in and of itself, though it may be the subject of an investment contract, just like any other standalone commodity. If this clause were eliminated, along with the preceding one, the ruling would still be sound. Because the SEC has avoided publicly defining its stance on whether the token itself is a security and is purposefully unclear in this case, I believe she inserted this examination of the token. And by including this analysis of the token, the judge unwittingly gave the XRP community a weapon against Bitcoin maxis, who say everything but Bitcoin is a security, and an argument against those who want to mud dye the waters about the judge's finding on what XRP those like, well, you spot on, let's see the guy ripped to shreds. Everything about this is superb. And up till now, if I haven't missed something. It seems he hasn't replied yet. Here comes the daddy of all cons, there are facts about this case that are already out in the open, so it's clear that he made a mistake. There has been extensive analysis of this situation. This man comes out swinging like he has something, and it was only the other day. I mean, that and analyze Torres's eventual decision, completely dissect it. Ah, come on. Especially in the first few hours after the news broke in July, if it were someone acting in good faith and attempting to get to the reality of the problem despite the issue's complexity, they would have had to read through a lot. That can be accepted. These words are written in November. I can't believe this guy. So, this Bitcoin maxi intends to get people to believe things that they know to be false? It's hard for me to believe that this guy actually believes the nonsense he's talking. He persists in making them even after being contradicted repeatedly. That person is acting in bad faith. Simply put, he is not, and therefore, will always be, white. I don't block a lot of people, so if you find out I've done so, you've probably done something really wrong. Perhaps not as much as I once did since, these days, I prefer it when people are straightforward and honest, I could care less whether others disagree with me. You're welcome. I enjoy in-depth discussions. Arguments are fun for me. The locals are mellow, and it helps me relax. However, yeah, if somebody is being rude, at this time I have less tolerance than I once did if they are going to come out right and just being a complete eggplant emoji to me, then okay, then fine. But why exactly would we want that?
That's one thing if you're just someone who needs that because they're being unreasonably cruel, but other than that introspective chit chat, you're good to go here, dude. But he's after a little skin daddy action, howdy. In any case, it's wonderful to witness. It's very satisfying to see how thoroughly he's been dismembered. Congratulations, Bill Mortgage, attorney. You shouldn't buy or sell anything based on what I say because I'm not a financial expert. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.